May 1st, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, 1 Samuel chapters 9 and 10 from the Old Testament. There was a Benjaminite man named Kish, son of Abiel, the son of Zeror, the son of Bekorath, the son of Aphiah of Benjamin. He was a prominent person. He had a son named Saul, a handsome young man. There was no one among the Israelites more handsome than he was. He stood head and shoulders above all the people. The donkeys of Saul's father, Kish, wandered off. So Kish said to his son Saul, Take one of the servants with you and go look for the donkeys. So Saul crossed the hill country of Ephraim, passing through the land of Selisha, but they did not find them. So they crossed through the land of Shalem, but they were not there. Then he crossed through the land of Benjamin, and still they did not find them. When they came to the land of Suf, Saul said to his servant who was with him, Come on, let's head back before my father quits worrying about the donkeys and becomes anxious about us. But the servant said to him, Look, there is a man of God in this town. He is highly respected. Everything that he says really happens. Now let's go there. Perhaps he will tell us where we should go from here. So Saul said to his servant, All right, we can go. But what can we bring the man, since the food in our bags is used up? We have no gift to take to the man of God. What do we have? The servant went on to answer Saul, Look, I happen to have in my hand a quarter shekel of silver. I will give it to the man of God, and he will tell us where we should go. Now it used to be in Israel that whenever someone went to inquire of God, he would say, Come on, let's go see the seer. For today's prophet used to be called a seer. So Saul said to his servant, That's a good idea. Come on, let's go. So they went to the town where the man of God was. As they were going up the ascent to the town, they met some girls coming out to draw water. They said to them, Is this where the seer is? They replied, Yes, straight ahead, but hurry now, for he came to the town today, and the people are making a sacrifice at the high place. When you enter the town, you can find him before he goes up to the high place to eat. The people won't eat until he arrives, for he must bless the sacrifice. Once that happens, those who have been invited will eat. Now go on up, for this is the time when you can find him. So they went up to the town. As they were heading for the middle of the town, Samuel was coming in their direction to go up to the high place. Now the day before Saul arrived, the Lord had told Samuel, At this time tomorrow I will send to you a man from the land of Benjamin. You must consecrate him as a leader over my people Israel. He will save my people from the hand of the Philistines, for I have looked with favor on my people. Their cry has reached me. When Samuel saw Saul, the Lord said, Here is the man that I told you about. He will rule over my people. As Saul approached Samuel in the middle of the gate, he said, Please tell me where the seer's house is. Samuel replied to Saul, I am the seer. Go up in front of me to the high place. Today you will eat with me, and in the morning I will send you away. I will tell you everything that you are thinking. Don't be concerned about the donkeys that you lost three days ago, for they have been found. Whom does all Israel desire? Is it not you and all your father's family? Saul replied, Am I not a Benjaminite? from the smallest of Israel's tribes, and is it not my family clan, the smallest of all the tribes of Benjamin? Why do you speak to me in this way? Then Samuel brought Saul and his servant into the room and gave them a place at the head of those who had been invited. There were about 30 people present. Samuel said to the cook, Give me the portion of meat that I gave to you, the one I ask you to keep with you. So the cook picked up the leg and brought it and set it in front of Saul. Samuel said, What was kept is now set before you. Eat, for it has been kept for you for this meeting time. From the time I said, I have invited the people. So Saul ate with Samuel that day. When they came down from the high place to the town, Samuel spoke with Saul on the roof. 
They got up at dawn, and Samuel called to Saul on the roof, Get up, so I can send you on your way. So Saul got up, and the two of them, he and Samuel, went outside. While they were going down to the edge of town, Samuel said to Saul, Tell this servant to go on ahead of us. So he did. Samuel then said, You remain here a while, so I can inform you of God's message. Then Samuel took a small container of olive oil and poured it on Saul's head. Samuel kissed him and said, The Lord has chosen you to lead his people Israel. You will rule over the Lord's people and you will deliver them from the power of the enemies who surround them. This will be your sign that the Lord has chosen you as leader over his inheritance. When you leave me today, you will find two men near Rachel's tomb at Zelzah on Benjamin's border. They will say to you, the donkeys you have gone looking for have been found. Your father is no longer concerned about the donkeys, but has become anxious about you two. He is asking, what should I do about my son? As you continue on from there, you will come to the tall tree of Tabor. At that point, three men who are going up to God at Bethel will meet you. One of them will be carrying three young goats. One of them will be carrying three round loaves of bread, and one of them will be carrying a container of wine. They will ask how you're doing and will give you two loaves of bread. You will accept them. Afterward, you will go to Gibeah of God, where there are Philistine officials. When you enter the town, you will meet a company of prophets coming down from the high place. They will have harps, tambourines, flutes, and lyres, and they will be prophesying. Then the Spirit of the Lord will rush upon you, and you will prophesy with them. You will be changed into a different person. When these signs have taken place, do whatever your hand finds to do, for God will be with you. You will go down to Gilgal before me. I am going to join you there to offer burnt offerings and to make peace offerings. You should wait for seven days until I arrive and tell you what to do. As Saul turned to leave Samuel, God changed his inmost person. All these signs happened on that very day. When Saul and his servant arrived at Gibeah, a company of prophets was coming out to meet him. Then the Spirit of God rushed upon Saul and he prophesied among them. When everyone who had known him previously saw him prophesying with the prophets, the people all asked one another, What on earth has happened to the son of Kish? Does even Saul belong with the prophets? A man who was from there replied, And who is their father? Therefore, this became a proverb, Is even Saul among the prophets? When Saul had finished prophesying, he went to the high place. Saul's uncle asked him and his servant, Where did you go? Saul replied, To look for the donkeys. But when we realized they were lost, we went to Samuel. Saul's uncle said, Tell me what Samuel said to you. Saul said to his uncle, He assured us that the donkeys had been found. But Saul did not tell him what Samuel had said about the matter of kingship. Then Samuel called the people together before the Lord at Mizpah. He said to the Israelites, This is what the Lord God of Israel says. I brought Israel up from Egypt and I delivered you from the power of the Egyptians and from the power of all the kingdoms that oppressed you. But today you have rejected your God who saves you from all your trouble and distress. You have said, No, appoint a king over us. Now take your positions before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. Then Samuel brought all the tribes of Israel near, and the tribe of Benjamin was chosen by Lot. Then he brought the tribe of Benjamin near by its families, and the family of Matri was chosen by Lot. At last, Saul, son of Kish, was chosen by Lot. But when they looked for him, he was nowhere to be found. So they inquired again of the Lord. Has the man arrived here yet? The Lord said, He has hidden himself among the equipment. So they ran and brought him from there. When he took his position among the people, he stood head and shoulders above them all. Then Samuel said to all the people, Do you see the one whom the Lord has chosen? Indeed, there is no one like him among all the people. 
All the people shouted, Long live the king! Then Samuel talked to the people about how the kingship would work. He wrote it all down on a scroll and set it before the Lord. Then Samuel sent all the people away to their homes. Even Saul went to his home in Gibeah. With him went some brave men whose hearts God had touched. But some wicked men said, How can this man save us? They despised him and did not even bring him a gift. But Saul said nothing about it. God, when you call us to do something, in this case, when you called Saul, why do we think that we're too old to do it or too young to do it or not smart enough to do it um, or we're too guilty of how we've lived our life to do something? I'm not exactly sure of what Saul's totality of his reasonings were, but obviously uh, when he was so clearly called by you, there was definite reasons in his own mind, in his heart, as to why he wasn't going to accept that position. He kept hiding it from his uncle. He literally hid from the people as the announcement was made. Sometimes people, I've noticed, are wanting to be humble. So when you call us to do something amazing, sometimes they think if they they shy away from him and back down then that's just them being humble but God I think we need to keep in mind who's in charge here that if you call us to do something number one you already fully realize that with you we can do anything that you call us to do you're not going to call us to fail um, you're going to call us to those positions because you have chosen us for those positions for very specific reasons uh, whether they're about us or about something else then I think uh, part two is that humbleness. I I've watched people kind of uh, hide their their gifts that they have. Uh, definitely, we don't want to head in the direction of arrogance of the world. But we should also be very vocal that the the gifts and the opportunities you've given us they're they're all from you. I wouldn't have what I do now, uh, a place to live. Uh, uh, a generous business, an amazing church. I wouldn't have all of those things if you hadn't given them to me. So I don't think that there should be a humbleness if you've called us to do something. I think instead we should make it very clear that it is a blessing that you gave us. I think the world teaches us that, that arrogance is bad. And I'm not saying it's good, but they only know one type of, of confidence and that's that arrogance piece whereas if we know that what we have came from you if we've been called into a position like Saul did we would be confident in that one that you would be with us as we took on that that ministry or that that piece of the puzzle uh, and two that any honor and any glory wouldn't be ours it would be completely yours because it was something that you had given us uh, to do for your kingdom so God, I just pray for everybody today. Uh, we've all been called at different times in our life and we've all, we've all freaked out like Saul has at different times. Um, I remember you calling me to do something and I, I cried for three days. <laughs> I remember going, God, do you remember who I am? And I very clearly remember you saying to me, Janelle, do you remember who I am? <laughs> yes, God, please help us remember today who you are. It's not about us. It's about you. In your son's name, I pray. Amen. <laughs>